Lots of people talk about the tech angle driver, talking about hitting up on the golf ball, increasing, decreasing, but what is ideal? You're gonna find out. Leaving so much distance on the table, gotta get that attack angle up. This is awesome, right across the board, all within the optimal parameters. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell, Director of Instruction at Swing Lab Performers Golf. Today we're going to be talking about attack angle, specifically attack angle with a more moderate club speed or in a faster club speed and different lofts on the driver. Let's face it, everyone's always pushing for more distance with the driver. The one, one way to do that is to increase your attack angle. But if you're not optimized with the correct loft on the driver or even the correct club head type, then it really doesn't help out. So ideally, if you watch these long drive golfers, what they're trying to do is they're trying to increase their attack angle, but they're also trying to decrease the loft on the driver. We're talking about spin loft. The, the, the lower the spin loft, the lower the spin on the golf ball, if you're able to launch that thing high and have low spin, it's gonna go really, really far. But at what sacrifice? Is the dispersion sacrifice? Of course it's gonna be. There's a good chance that if you hit the ball further with less spin, you slightly catch it off the toe of the heel of the club, it's gonna dive right or left. Long drive golfers, they've only got to get one ball out of six in the grid, and their grip's pretty wide. When we're playing golf, real golf on the golf course, you have to hit fairways. Otherwise, you're going to be chipping out sideways. You have to keep it between the white stakes. Otherwise, you're going to be reloading. So accuracy is important. So we're going to definitely consider accuracy when we're talking about attack angle, when we're talking about what type of driver head you should be playing. So for today's test, I'm going to hit some shots with a more moderate club speed and a faster club speed with a nine degree driver and a 10, uh, sorry, and a 12 degree driver and with an attack angle up about five degrees and with a neutral attack angle around about zero. And we're gonna compare all the numbers and find out just kind of what is optimal. Four out of four in the fairway. Can't complain with that, right? However, you'll notice when I start out here with a 12 degree driver and I'm hitting up on it with my attack angle, I'm leaving some serious distance on the table. But is the sacrifice worth it? We're gonna find that out. But look, if we take a look here at these numbers. You can see dispersion. I think my furthest miss was about 12 yards right of the center line, about 16 yards left of the center line. Middle of the fairway, two of them were almost absolutely dead straight. However, we'll notice ball speed probably leaving a little bit on the table by having too much loft on the driver. Spin rate, over 3000 RPMs. That's definitely very high for me. Um, and then carry distance, 274, going to 85. That thing's coming down like a pitching wedge. The landing angle is about 49 degrees. When I'm doing a driver fitting, I highly recommend 30 to 40 degrees on the landing angle. That way you know you've got the ideal loft on your driver, and that way you know you can get the most optimal carry and total distance. You can see over here on the, on the app optimizer here, max carry distance. I'm leaving distance on the table with ball speed, and I'm also launching the ball too high, spin rate's too high, and height is definitely way too high. So I wanted to show you to start out a bad fit. 12 degrees of loft with my attack angle, my club speed is way too much. Let's reduce it to nine, swing the same way, and see what the difference is. Similar club speed, similar attack angle, still hitting up on the ball, but you'll notice the distance has changed. We changed from 12 degrees to nine degrees. This is just the Callaway Paradigm, paradigm driver. This is not the low spin drive that I actually play. That's another way for me to get my spin rate down and get a little more ball speed yet. But I just wanted to show the difference. If you take a look here, more ball speed, a little bit, little bit more ball speed. Spin rate is about 600 RPMs less. So that's the big difference is spin rate has changed. So my carry distance went from 274 to 284. So I picked up 10 yards of carry distance. However, you might think, oh, 10 yards isn't much. The difference, though, is the way the ball rolled out. The landing angle was closer to 40 degrees versus 50 degrees. So now I was able to get the ball to roll out to 304 
versus only going to 85. So I only picked up 10 yards of carry distance, but I picked up 20 yards of total distance. That's because the ball was flying a little bit more optimal ball flight. We can see that over here on the optimizer. So you can see the numbers are now closer to the blue area before the launch angle was too high, the spin rate was too high, and the height was definitely way too high. Now you can see launch angle 13.6 kind of fits between the blue, spin rate 2500 fits between the blue, height 118 feet in the air fits between the blue. So that's what we're looking at in a club fitting. Yes, there's more ways for me to get more distance. As you've probably seen when I've done other videos, I'm able to get my spin rate down by playing a lower spin driver or even decreasing the loft there as well. But this is just a good example to show what distance gains you can make by playing the right loft on your driver. Attack angle is important. So now I wanna come back to doing the same thing with the attack angle now being at a very more neutral attack angle, around about zero degrees. Same club speed, the only thing that changed here now is the loft. And we also, well I try to hit down on the ball, but you'll notice my attack angle was actually one degrees up, instead of being six degrees up. So I'm hitting down on the ball five degrees more than what a normal swing does. Big, big differences in the numbers. So first off, 12 degrees of loft on the driver, hitting up on it only one degree versus, versus six. You'll notice here, I'm actually very close to what is considered optimal. If we take a look at the height, back to that 117 feet in the air. Spin, this is where you are gonna get a little bit more spin because the attack angle is a little bit more down. Um, launch angle, perfect low, 12.6. So you'll notice we're all kind of considered within the optimal. The only thing, once again, I was leaving on the table was ball speed. We've been doing that all across the board. I'm probably not quite catching it absolutely in the, in the sweet spot. Um, big difference there, obviously you can see 269 going 286. So that's kind of all I'm going to get out of the distance wise if my attack angle, if I do not increase my attack angle. If I just continue to swing the same way, if I now switch to 9 degrees however, yes we can get more total distance. You can see here it was rolling out to 295, but I actually lost 9 yards in carry distance because I have 3 degrees less loft on the driver. If we take a look over here on the right, TrackMan Optimizer is showing us, crushing it, great ball speed, but the sacrifice now, I almost, the height was almost half what it was before, 64 feet in the air, spin rate's a little bit low, launch angle's a little bit low. So what we're finding out here is attack angle is key. It's really, really important. We noticed that six degrees was probably just a little bit high, but you'll notice that one degrees was probably just a little bit low. Now this all is going to depend on how fast you're swinging and what loft you play on the driver. So I have not forgot about the more moderate swing speed golfers. We're gonna do the same exact test here now with a more moderate club speed and now we're probably gonna see some big differences. Okay, so really interesting stuff here. Um, we slowed the swing speed down to right around about 95 miles an hour with an attack angle around about one degree positive, so pretty neutral. Um, so first off, you'll notice here, with a more neutral attack angle, I was actually getting a little bit more ball speed, which is, which is great. Um, but you actually kind of notice here, I was leaving a little bit of carry distance on the table. So the ball was carrying seven yards shorter versus having more loft on the driver. Crazy, right? I was actually hitting the ball further with more loft on the driver than less loft on the driver. A lot of people will say when you have, more, when you have less loft on the driver, you're gonna get more ball speed. Well, if you don't have enough club speed, that is not going to work. If you have more club speed, it's going to work because you're, what you're doing is reducing the spin. You'll notice the spin rate really didn't actually change too much. 
So you'll notice 2700, 2762. But I do want to bring you over to this optimizer because let's face it, when we're talking about 95 mile hour club speed, we're not going to see a drastic change. We're going to see changes, but seven yards is seven yards versus say I'm swinging 110, maybe that's 14 yards. It's still going to be one less club hitting into the green. Okay, so neutral attack angle, 12 degrees aloft. You'll notice here that the height was too low, the spin was okay, uh, launch angle was too low, ball speed was obviously great. So the ball was landing at 250, 225, rolling out to 252. Let's take a look at the positive attack angle of 12 degrees left. This is awesome. Right across the board, all within the optimal parameters. 100 feet in the air, great. Spin rate, 2700, perfect. You can see everything's kind of split right in the middle. So what I'm saying here is the loft on the driver, the attack angle, and your club speed is so important to get right. I could hit less loft on the driver to show you, but I think we've proved a point here. Attack angle is so important, you've got to optimize it. If you are hitting down on it, you have to play more loft on the driver. It's just a given. If you're hitting up on it, then you can get away with a little less loft on the driver. But it's not always about chasing the entire distance because you still want to hit the ball fairly straight. Spin is your friend when it comes to that. So spin is going to give you the accuracy. Too much spin, you leave loot too much distance on the table. Not enough spin, the ball's gonna dive out of the sky and not go as far. So interesting stuff. If you're swinging at 95 miles an hour, this is kind of your optimal window right here. If you're swinging at 95 miles an hour and you're, um, you're outside the window, then you have to change the loft on the driver or your attack angle to get a more optimal window. And we can help you with that at Swing Lab Performance Golf. Come on in for a club fitting or a private lesson. We can help you with that. Also, let us know what you think about this video. Let us know if this makes sense or if there's anything else that you need help to work on. We'd love to help you. Please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for the next video.